Okay, so now we're going to look at continuously compounded interest. Now, this is the best because you get the most back when you are compounding continuously. So the future value in T years of P dollars at an APR of R compounded continuously is F sub E of T equals P E to the R T. Now, this is E because we have the E function in here. We have the exponent, or E to the some power. And this usually is just called the PERT equation because P e to the RT, we can just put it all in one line as PERT. And so compounded interest, that's usually how we remember it as PERT. Now again, uh, it's, it's because that has that E there. And so we kind of talked about that line. Now, if you remember, uh, we did APY for just normal compounding interest. And the APY for that was usually just the one plus R over N to the n, then it was minus one. So that was the APY uh, for the other kinds of uh, interest compounding. And this here part really was the whole thing because if we if we found something, usually it was like 1.047, and then after you subtract one, you get the 0 0.047, and then you convert that to a percent, and it's 4.7%, okay? Well, here we have the e to the r is the same thing as this. This is how we're getting our interest. We're gaining interest by e to that rate. And so this part is really the key thing, whereas in the other equation, that was the key thing. And so if we think about this, when we get something out, we might end up with 1.058, you know, and then we'll have minus one, and then we get that going to a 5.8% interest. And so, you know, when we have this effective rate, that's that's kind of how we can we can plug it in is that's our effective rate because if we subtract one, that's our percentage, and then we can take it back into the 1.058 and use that. All right, so if we want to compare investments with different conversion periods, let's say we suppose have $77,000 invested at a 3.8 APR. What is the value of the investment after 22 months if it's compounded annually and compounded quarterly and compounded monthly and compounded continuously? All right, so what do we know? Well, here we have, that's our P. This is our R, and remember, we have to have it as a decimal. And then when we do things compounding annually, you know, after 12 months, it's gonna be the first time after 24 months, that'll be the second year. And I'm doing that because they give it to us in months. And so we have to kind of think about where annually is. Well, it's by months, so it's 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, and so on. Well, what about quarterly? Well, quarterly, well, you know, that's every three months. So that's three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24 months. So those are how they're represented by months again. Now, if it's compounded monthly, well, you know, it's, that's just one, two, three, four, five. That's, that's pretty easy. And compounded continuously, we just have that, you know, PE to RT. So you know, we, did, we just learned that, so we should have that one down. But these are really the ones that's gonna cause us some issues because we're gonna have to do something different with our calculations. All right, so let's go ahead and do our first one, A. Now, when we do this, if we're compounding annually and we've only gone 22 months, have we got to this second part here? If we can draw a straight line. You know, have we got to 24 months, months which is where we're gonna compound the next time? No, we've only compounded for one month. And then the rest of the time it's just been sitting there and then we would compound again at 24 months. And so really we're looking for F of one, okay? And so that's gonna be 77,000 times our one plus 0 0.038, our R, divided by one, because we've only done one month, and then we have, or one year, I mean, and then we have one times one, okay? So it's compounded uh, annually, one time, and we've only done it once because we can't get that second one until we hit 24, and so that's what we would have here, and so this gives us a value of what? Well, now we have to plug that into our calculator. And so let's go over here. And so we would take 77,000, oops, too many, 77,000 times. And then we had our one plus 0 0.038 divided by one raised to the power one times one. 
Okay, and so that gives us our value of 79,926. Okay, so that's basically going to be what we have for our answer. So let's go back, make sure I have that written down properly. Uh, $79,926. And so that would be our value after that one uh, year, okay? And again, once we hit the number 24 months, then we can say, okay, well now it's gonna be T is two, so we can do that. Uh, now B, interest is compounded quarterly. So where do we fall here with 22 months? Well, we fall right there, 21 months. That's, that's as far as we can go there. So our equation is gonna have to be based on that fraction. So F of, well now, um, we're, let's just put T, because we know it's going to be T. So that's going to be 77,000 times 1 plus uh, 0 0.038 divided by quarterly, so that'd be a 4, raised to the quarterly power, which is N times, now we have T. Now our T is what we have. We have the 21 out of, 12 because we have that many months in a thing so we're going to be 21 over 12 and so that's what our t here would be too but i wanted to kind of make it so we would understand how we got to that before we did it so that would be 21 over 12 because it's quarterly so you know every quarter and so but it, we have to convert that 21 months into kind of you know years and things like that so we're going to go ahead and divide it by the 12. now we're going to plug that into our calculator so let's go back over here. And so I have 77,000 times the one plus, and then we have the 0 0.038 divided by the quarterly, which is four, and then raised to the power four times. And now we have the 21 divided by 12, okay? And so this is going to give us what it will be uh, quarterly. So that's going to give us 82,268.77. All right, so let's go back here. And that says, okay, now we get 82,268.77 as far as how much we're gonna make on quarterly. All right, so that's not too bad still. You know, we've, we've made a lot more quarterly than we did annually because we missed that whole second part. You know, we stopped at 12 months. So we really stopped at this point right here. Uh, if we think about when we stopped gaining interest, here we got, you know, three more interest payments kind of uh, that were compounded that we didn't get for that first one. All right, so what do we do for monthly? Well, monthly now, okay, let's do the next page here. So this is going to be uh, C, and so monthly. And so F of, now let's leave that blank again. I'm not gonna put the T this time because I have to erase it. So we're gonna have 77,000, and then we have one plus 0 0.038 over 12, because we're gonna compound it monthly. And then so it's gonna be 12 times, and we have 22 out of 12 for the monthly, okay? And so this one is gonna be 22 out of 12. All right, so now uh, what are we going to have? Now, uh, did I do the last one right? Yeah, 21 out of 12, okay. Now this is 22 because we have the 22 months. All right, I was just making sure I was writing this down right, right, because I all of a sudden had a, a vision I was doing something wrong. And so now we plug that into our calculator. All right, so 77, thousand times our one plus 0 0.038 divided by uh, now we're doing 12 months and so now we divide by or not divide we raise to the power and then we have 12 times 22 divided by 12 and what do we get 82,546.52 all right so let's put that in so we got 82,546.52 if I remember correctly. And so that's how much we'd make if we got interest uh, monthly. All right, what about if we do this uh, continuously? All right, so again, we're gonna have F of, and so we'll have 
thousand. And now we have, remember, e to the power r, 0 0.038, and now the time. Well, it's going to be, you know, 22 months, so we have to figure out how many, um, uh, 22, not 12, how many parts of a year that is, so we divide by 12, and so this again is 22 over 12. And so now we plug that into our calculator. So we have 77,000. Now we have second ln to get our e. And so then we had our 0.038 times uh, 22 divided by 12. And we get 82,555.61, which you can see it goes up just a little bit more, but it's still a better uh, return on our money than even monthly was, all right? So, oops, go back over here. And so we had that 82,555.61, and that would be our return for compounding continuously, all right? So that's uh, what we have based on the, you know, the P, the R, and then our, our funny uh, time, you know, the 22 months instead of a specific, you know, it's, you know, two years or, 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 or whatever we're used to, okay? So that was the key thing here is what do we do with 22 months? So we had to go and say, well, that was only 21 out of the 22 because the next one would be 24 and that's not where we hit, you know? And then this one, we only had one year done because that would have to get to 24 before we hit the two years for the two here. And so then this was all 22 months and this was also 22 months. So we really had to pay attention to what we're doing and write out each thing to make sure we fell in the right place. All right, I'll stop there and I'll come back for one last one.